Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my day will walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. And I mean all, I mean all. I mean on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it. We're on it. Just Google us. Boss Talk Podcast 101. We'll pop up first in line. But I know y'all always see us on the street and talk about, man, y'all doing a good job. We love the content. Keep it up. How can we support the brand? This is how you can support a brand. It's under each and every YouTube video. Right here in the description section, there's a link that says join our membership. Become a member today. That's very important to support the brand. And once you click it, follow all the instructions. And let me tell you, you get all the exclusive content that not everybody can see. You're going to be so amazed. So go ahead and do so now. Thank you, and we love you. Man, check it, man. We got somebody in here today y'all really need to talk to, man. She in the building, what's man. Up, what's up? What's up? What's <laughs> up? I'm finally at the real I'm boss I'm talking talk. about Project Barbie. Peaches in the building. She been around here for a minute on Boss Talk 101. We just mm -hmm. was in certified New now. Orleans. We yep, was in New I'm Orleans, man. Now. She I'm in the certified. building in Dallas today. I'm in Wearing the, the wrong building. damn shirt. No, I'm in the right shirt. <laughs> you know I'm in the right shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean, E? I'm in the right oh, shirt. Who wait that? a minute. Who <laughs> that? Man, you know what, man? You know the ain'ts. I mean the saints. You I mean, I'm, just, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I love you. <laughs> hey, man. So thank you for coming. On boss talk. I'm excited to be at this boss talk. So we've done it in New Orleans like twice. twice. Yeah, like. and now I'm at the real boss talk in Dallas. I almost forgot, but I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Just really want to just go go down through that with you. It's a lot of different things that's transpiring. I mean, I jump, dive, and slide right into, into things. It, of course. Um, Lil Wayne not performing at the. Uh, su the Super Bowl yeah. 2025 when he had already uh, alluded to wanting to do it right. and then it not happening for him and also him apologizing. I want mm -hmm. you to just go into what you feel about that and if it's really something that you know you even thought about. Um, it's a lot that I would, I would think that we all talk about in New Orleans. Um, a lot of people they don't understand um, you know a lot of times they say we as New Orleanians, um, we feel like we're old things. And that's only because we're always left out of so many things. Um, I think the most upsetting part about it, I was upset a bit too because, of course, this is a big year for the Hot Boys. I mean, it's a big year for their brand. It's a big year just for New Orleans to be back on the main scene. And I think that's what's probably the most hurtful part because it could have did so much for everybody that was involved, whether it be Turk, whether it be BG, whether it be Juvenile, all these people people you know it would have brought back to new orleans um i don't think it's so much of the we don't think that kendrick lamar is great because of course we all love kendrick lamar and of course his artistry is something that can never ever be topped and you can never change that but i think when it comes to new orleans and just that culture of new orleans and just being embedded into that culture of new orleans it's we just we love lil wayne so much i mean we've seen him come from nothing to where he is. He really is that person now that we look at and be like, he really made it. Well, but why do you think that they they chose him? Not only because he's hot, but what can he bring to New Orleans that Lil Wayne could That's what, I don't think it's so much what he could bring. I think it's all because they want to end Drake. And I think that's another thing wow. that's the most disrespectful part of it all because not only did you take from Lil Wayne, because next year they have it in Cali. Why Kendrick just couldn't do it next year? That's right. But you, you want to end him so bad on that platform that you want the whole world, like billions of people, to be like, they not like us. He's a 69 guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all have forced the wow. song on us. The propaganda is just crazy behind the track. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, like I said, I don't have any problem with Kendrick Lamar. I just feel like there's next year. Let him do it next year. Let me ask you this, though. Like, when you hear... Um, different people like Joe Budden. Joe Budden, I just spoke on this. Uh, he he actually uh, downplayed Lil Wayne, said that his health... I think that's he the said craziest his health thing. was not going to be able to make it. He says that... His health not going like, to make like, it? Like, through, a, through a Super Bowl show. He just performed I'm just essence. telling you what he said. I think it's the most disrespectful that, yeah. thing. Like, on the internet, <laughs> it has, Twitter has been crazy with them trying to compare the two. And I just feel like... I don't feel like it, it'll ever be a point where they'll ever be on the same level. Not to say... Well, one is greater than the other one because one has been here longer. Um, one has been through more, probably not. I don't know really the ins and outs of their situation compared to each other. But I just feel like 
Lil Wayne, when people are talking about Lil Wayne now, they're not giving Lil Wayne the credit that Lil Wayne should give. Like, this man has done multiple mixtapes. This man has music that, I mean, when we go in a club, that's what we came out on. I mean, every time I listen to Lil Wayne in the car, it gives that nostalgic feel. Because we were in college when No Ceilings came out. I remember being in the club when No Ceilings came out. I remember being in cars with guys you were dating and No Ceilings came out. Like, Lil Wayne connects a lot to our youth a lot to what made us us well i bar i, I want to say this uh, okay go ahead. Uh, is it gonna be on the same subject yeah. go ahead go ahead i'm, I'm gonna let you roll <laughs> <laughs> no but um and hypothetically speaking because i know sometimes you know with politics and they want to keep the peace and stuff mm. like that do you think that and i know that super bowl loves to do surprises right so do you think that if when kendrick comes out if he actually you know brings out lil wayne do you think that that would be okay do you think that would be a possibility do you think lil wayne would actually agree to something like that i mean i think he would i think it would be only just because it is new orleans you want to give us that feel you want to give us that that moment um, but then again, it's also like, you know, you still undermine me and act like I'm not superior. I'm not important. Like my catalog is not extensive enough. And I, I, I really hate the politics of people saying what Lil Wayne haven't done, what he can't do when it comes to concert wise. Because I've been to three Lil Wayne concerts this year. Three. Man, three Lil Wayne concerts this year. Last year, I probably went to two. It was all surprised. And I was just so excited. The catalog itself is so extensive that, like I said, it gives you that nostalgic feel. You dare, you like, man, I remember when this song came out. I went to the Essence and he did Earthquake, that song he did with Jazzy Feet. And it just was the feels. Like, it just, it make you feel good. And then, like, a lot, like, people saying, y'all favorite artist is performing with music in the back. I've been to a Kanye West and Jay-Z concert. They ain't had no live band. Mm -hmm. Lil Wayne is coming with a live band. He's gonna come with a live band. But it's just, I feel like when it comes to New Orleans, it's a lot. They leave us behind a lot. Even 50 years of hip hop, I feel like they didn't give us what we should have got. Dig into it a little bit deeper. I think being an older cat, you know, already I alluded, I already think it's biased anyway. When it comes to the South, (laughs) I think Jay Z, God bless him, um, when it comes down to Birdman and just the fact of how Birdman and Slim them separated themselves and became their own bosses in the and that's South. That's what it is. I think it's a com- competition thing. I think they feel like if they give us too much leeway, it's going to shine the light on something that's already got a light shined on it. We never needed nobody because of our independence and mm-hmm. our people like you who support the in- infrastructure. We right. have our own supporters down here. So you can. Like Pimp them I always used to say, you can sidestep us, you, you, but you, you can't, you, you can't, can't leave us out because we are gonna steadily sell. We gonna do everything we supposed to do on our end because our people gonna continue to, to, uh, you know, support us. But how much do you think that plays a part of it? The fact of how Birdman them and and actually Jay, they went back and forth even over Lil Wayne when he was Jay was trying to get right. Lil Wayne. Think about that. Right. Th- these things are things that we don't try to talk about, but these things really they happen. They have happened. Um, like I said, like I, it's a lot of politics, and I, like I said, it. I just feel like when it comes to New Orleans, we're left out a lot. Fifty years of hip hop, they left us out. Like they try to make it up and then got Boosie, but Boosie is Baton Rouge. Boosie is not New Orleans. That's right. New Orleans was a leader of a whole culture. We gave y'all no limit. We gave y'all cash money. We the reason that a lot of this style is what it is now. Like we the reason uh, people wearing camouflage it like they wearing it. Like Louisiana, New Orleans, that embedded culture. It's our style and it's our influence. What do you so th- when you try to erase that, it's like disrespectful. What do you think your brother would think about all this? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> Let, let's be real about it. <laughs> like, first of all, Lil Wayne has been really, really nice about it. If it was my brother, my brother would have cursed him out, called him everything so but the child of God. Try to hear it, would he? Listen, what, everything but the child of God. And then probably would have went and slapped somebody behind it. But that's just my brother. <laughs> like, right, when you look at your brother, just bringing him up for a second, uh, Gip, uh, when I had him on the show, Big Gip, yep. Gip was t- he. It was a picture of him and him yeah. had, in New York, and they had played one of Juvie's songs, and he and, and he said your brother was trying to get his song played, and that was so funny the way he said your brother reacted to the fact of how they was trying not to play his music in New York when they was up there together, which is crazy, <laughs> you know. Like he was so he his spirit was so outgoing to where he wasn't trying to hear it no matter what. What? Yeah, my brother was really, really, really like this is his dream his 
I, like I said, ever since I've known, I, I, I'm four years old. My brother been like, I believe he was 13 years old. And my brother was rapping and getting picked up, like I said, in limousines, like his first concert. Like I'm a little bitty girl, knee high, like my daughter age. And um, my brother's being picked up to go to concerts. So like my whole life, for us, it's just always been normal. Like this is the most I've, especially this year and like the years recent that I know that he's really on the mainstream. Like I've never, like my whole life, we just always just thought, you know, that's Daryl. <laughs> Cause yeah. that's what we call him. Yeah. That's Daryl. Like, yeah, he got the music. We know the music, but it's like it really connects with the people, and that's why like people are like, oh, you don't want your, you don't want nobody to say nothing negative about. I don't care if you say nothing negative about my brother, but at the same time, like people are like, oh, he was a cocaine. He was a this. Whatever my brother was, he gonna tell you about it in the music. He don't hide none of his life. Like the Bible, he is an open book. He gonna tell you about him before anybody else could tell you about him. He not none he did. He was ashamed of none he did. I'm ashamed of. We that's love it. it here. That's it. <laughs> we I, love it here. I, you, I really think that, like I said, I think that's dope that that you guys, you know, that you still have so many people respecting him like that. Because you talk I about the about, about a little bit of the hate or the negative naysayers, but it's a lot of people that have been on this show in that seat that talk so highly of Soldier Slim, and it just it's funny to me how people really, really, a lot of people knew him in different ways, but how much is that? cap how much is that you feel is people just you know what i'm saying riding away now like if yeah. it, <laughs> you can tell the genuine people a lot of it is a lot of fluff a lot of internet fluff most of it is internet fluff <laughs> a lot of it if it's coming from uh look terrence gangster williams internet oh, fluff God. Um, if it's like a lot of it is internet fluff so if you're from new orleans you're trying to capitalize you're trying to get your name out there use a soldier slim story like I've never in my life heard no story about my brother going to nobody's house saving somebody from a burning house. Bitch, that's a fireman job. That didn't happen. Um, <laughs> wow. Somebody said that. Yeah, like, what it are you that, talking about? Like, I was that? like, did you hear, did you hear Gates to say oh, no. I was like, wait, he went in the house and saved some people. Internet fluff. A lot of it is internet fluff. Um, like I said, I try not to, like, it all publicity is I, good publicity I love but the it's fact just crazy that you you address that because some people will feel like because i'm saying something good although it's not true that you let it you know slide because it makes him look even you know better i i mean let's be realistic <laughs> I, I think it's good that you speak out period because of who you are yeah, I think like i just told pimp c son Corey, uh young pimp here like there are so many different programs out there. I see your brother as well. They use AI technology. Right. And they create documentaries. They create all this stuff. Mm -hmm. We need realistic views from realistic people who are connected to these to people. To these people. And that's the scary so part I about thank the God internet. For you and I thank God for Young Pimp for coming on here and really just setting the record straight so people can see in history. This is what we stood for. Right. Without us doing that, I know a lot of times people get sick of hearing his name or sick of hearing their their family member's name but if we don't speak up who gonna speak we, up you know that, and that's what a lot of people are like I, if her brother was here he would be embarrassed of her never this has been me forever like this has been me like when my brother was alive they didn't want to let us in a teen summit one time I said if you don't let me in I'm about to call my brother and when my brother get here he gonna let you know <laughs> this been me <laughs> this ain't nothing new you can't tell me that about my brother this been when my brother was alive you can't tell me that about my brother that's my brother you but some people would what? say like you, you've not been with him 24 7s when he was alive right so you don't know everything that he did correct so you know how can you refute and be like well Nah, he didn't do that, or he did that, or, you know, you really don't know. I don't never try to refute it, because I don't know what people be doing in the street. I know in a 24-hour day, I do all type of stuff. So I can't say what somebody else ain't doing in the street. That's the that's the misconceptionalized ideology beh behind it, right. that they feel like I want to correct his errors. I don't want to correct anybody's errors. We know who my brother is. It's cutthroat committee. It's, you can't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't be wholesome, but you cutthroat. I'm just being real. <laughs> so we, you know, we know what he's done, but I also feel like he's also done great things mm -hmm. that you know all the time they capitalize, try to capitalize off the negative thug. You know what I'm saying? Lifestyle, and I feel like a lot of time with black people, if it's on the opposite dark side, people like to capitalize off that. But what about the good sides? You know what I'm saying? What about the things that people did, like Kitty Black, her house burned down, and he let her live with him. 
till she got a new house. And all the time she talk about that because she was like, I didn't have nowhere to go. I didn't know where I was going to go. I had my child. I didn't know what to do. And he was like, just come over here and live with us. Wow, that is that is so dope. Like, man. Lil Real One, Lil Real One, the, Lil Real One's mom was on drugs, and my brother found him in the street, and he was a good rapper. And he told my mama, I think he could be somebody. And he moved him in with him and put clothes on his back, took care of him. Like, my brother took care of a lot of young, young cats dude. because they didn't have nobody to look up to in the street because yeah. people be on fucked up shit. Like, they want, like I said, it's popular to glorize, to glorize all this Things over mm -hmm. here about negative, gun toting, this, that, and the other. But what about these people, these children that are in the street that don't have anybody? Wow. I think you said something when you said cutthroat. Because I think about it, just his legs, and I think me and Lil, Lil Sochlin talked about this, how he dissed cash money at one point. Now he also dissed no limit at one point. So, like, what do you think when you see how he was? And how do you... I mean, I see you talking on live a lot, like even when you got to Dallas, like how do you feel you compare it to how your brother was and the way he was when he would, you know, uh, you know, spit it or talk, you know, talk that talk. Well, we come from my mama. <laughs> <laughs> we got the same mama and my mama's like that too. My mom is just a little more on the emotional side. So we like, we don't put the emotion behind it. Like if we feel like we feel, we're going to let you know how we feel. If you don't like it, fuck you. It is what it is, but we're going to be transparent and we're going to be real about it. And I think that's what a lot of people see when it comes to both of us. Like even with my brother, my brother was a no bullshit person and my brother will slap the piss out of you. Don't get it confused. He will bat you like they said in New wow. Orleans, will bat the piss out of you in a minute if he feel like you was disrespecting him. Me, per se, I'm kind of like cool, collective on the intellectual side of it. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you about yourself. If I don't like something you did, you don't never got a question. I see people in the street, they be on this internet shit, on them little blocks. And when I see them, I be like, yeah, you posted that, but like, what's up? Like, I won't fight you, but what's up? Like, we could talk about it physically. You went on the internet and did that, but we could definitely talk about it. While we yeah, here. Yeah. Like, they don't have nothing to say. They don't got nothing to say because you don't know that on the internet. Like, it's weird. Wow. I... <sighs> I really, like I said, I, I just thank you for coming to the show today. Oh, I thank y'all for always and, messing and with really, me, even really from the rocking. first time. Like, oh, we yeah, ever met. It, we gonna get it's just always been a good connection. Yeah, yeah. Good people. Good people like good people. Well, I think. So, but, you oh, know, but, ahead. you know, let's go on to this a little bit more with the Lil Wayne. Um, and the <clears throat> because I know that um, D1 spoke about. Yeah, D1 said, spoke up for Kendrick. Right. And him being from New Orleans, you know, a lot of people jumped on him for that. What do you feel about that? I don't feel anything. I mean, it is what it is. Some people come from different walks of life. So we can't explain. You know what I'm saying? Like Cookie said, fuck. That's why they got a sidewalk. Some people ain't made for the streets. Wow. Mm. So, I mean, some people come from a different walk of life. I can't never bash a person. They not glorizing, you know, guns and stuff like that. But if this is where I'm come from, why can't I tell you about what I seen in front of me? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like I, I don't get that about D1. I, I don't get that because I just feel like that's judgmental. Like we all come from some places. You come from college. I come from college, but I can't tell a nigga off the street that his story don't need to be told because my story is different. Yeah. Like that's I don't respect that. I mean, yeah. he he definitely deserves to have his own opinion and what he believes in. And of course, always the youth are first, and, and we we are the influencers. But at the same time, why are we just the influencer? Why is the household? Not the influencer. But it's my saying, job. But is he saying that um, because you're from the streets, your stories can't be told? Or he's saying that show the elevation from the streets to now you're not in the streets no more. And you are so that these young kids don't feel like I just got to be in the streets that this might be a moment in time. But you need to try to get out of here. Don't think that oh, I need to be doing this for the right. rest of my life type of thing. But you got to do that with certain artists, too. Like, because at the same time, I think the influence where it went left were more on the the youthful side, more of on the Lil Dirk, young boy side of things. I didn't particularly feel like Rick Ross, Meek Mill. I feel like these people are, like they say, motivational purposes. Like when you look at their life, where they came from and where they are now, that is the example, right? Mm -hmm. They were in the street. They came from the street. They got out the street because they wanted, you know what I'm saying? Let's be realistic about it. To chase your dream as a black man in America, can you chase your dream if you're on a nine to five? Not, not, not no, majority. No. Not majority. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? But some Especially have. some have, and then but majority rules is like 
it's harder because mm-hmm. as a black man, if you, you know, most black men, it stops at high school education. Mm-hmm. Then you got to go into the workforce where you're not making as much money, but you still have to provide for your family, your household, nine times out of 10, your parents' household as well, because we're all in a place where economically we're messed up. So it's kind of like, like I said, I side with him too, because I get it, because we, we are... You know what I'm saying? We are who they're looking at, but why are the rappers just the ones who need to put out a positive image? I mean, let's be real about it. Is the politicians not really the problems? They the ones that's messing up the community. They the ones that's taking the schools from your kids. They the ones that's putting certain things into the schools and taking it out that your kids need. But nobody looks at the politicians and be like, they need to fix the world, but a rapper needs to fix the I world. I think the reason he does that is because of where his gift lies in the music. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why he challenged that so hard, you know. But at the end of the day, I agree with you when it comes down to it um, because of the way the the books that we read, the way that we take on these characters that we portray when it comes down to spiritualism. You you could look at in the book John the Baptist versus uh, the way Paul or the way Jesus done something. Everybody had different character Correct. traits, the way that they ministered right. to people. So you'll see that, that John the Baptist type spirit that he has to where he's trying to cultivate what he believes in. But at the end of the day, you also got to understand that that's his ministry and it's like you say, I agree with you in this, but I don't understand that because people do evolve. But I think in the midst of it all, everybody's evolving. Even, so right. I, I really, even anybody. him, I don't even look at him in no way. Even Rick Ross, I don't even, it's okay for me to look at all of them in a way to where I see the evolution of it all. Right. Does that make sense? It makes a lot to of where sense. I, I'm not going to judge none of them, but I am going to check you if you come to me. Me, with right, you know right. What I'm <laughs> I, can't, I know my ministry. So at the end of the day, if you come to me with it, I'm going to check you. But, but, but all respect to D1, because that's my partner. No. I'm just saying. Um, we all come from different walks of life, and I just feel like um, if we can't tell an author or a movie, a strip writer, that they make these strips, they write these books, they kill people in it, they, you know what I'm saying? How it's art. Yeah. And I feel like there is no depiction on art. Like there is no limit on art. Art is art. You know what I'm saying? We just have to make sure that the kids understand that with art, some things are real and some things are false. Yeah, and he put on and he put on for New Orleans too. Oh, he, he represents New Orleans. You, and he's showing um New Orleans is not just, you know, murder capital or you right. know stuff like that but there is another side there is another it. side and that's what I like about what he does he shows the balance not right. only that you know? not only that he, he come like when he flies to Dallas he's coming here to go to these youth centers or these right. churches yeah. he goes D1 up has he, always he, he always been, trying yeah, to help always now, he, been, um, he working out here yeah he's always been a really positive person he's always been good vibes definitely always good vibes um, it's just a rap poet to throw y'all. <laughs> yeah, because that's why he be coming at different people and artists, is, mm-hmm. and you are artists. So I get it. I understand why. You know what I'm saying? I'm It'd be saying. like, if, like if what they say, me, what, what Erica Badu say, listen, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, if he come for podcasts and say, man, you be interviewing, but you talk about <laughs> God here, but then I'm going to be like, well, hold, well, up, hold up, hold up, now. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. This, you know, this, you know that, you're coming from a job now. <laughs> you know what I'm so, saying? So, but I totally get it. Um, right now, we're, we are in a place where the youth are a bit more um, feeble. You know, their mind hasn't picked up to the status where they're able to distinguish the two, and they do want to imitate the art that they're seeing yeah but at the same time it's our job in a community as a community um with our kids with our kids friends with our family to let them know that some things are real and some things are just for tv and the internet and a lot of things are internet fluff the the one thing you gotta understand man is you you are a you are pinnacle when it comes down to the movement of what's going on in new orleans i always often ask this question here lately about I keep mentioning no limit in cash money. How much of an impact would it be if they said they was going to throw a concert at halftime while the Super Bowl was going on at halftime? Oh, my Together. goodness. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy, right? What do you mean? They could just shit. shut the world down. It would it would, it'd be crazy, wouldn't it? It would be so crazy they could shut the world down. Like, I was so mad for Essence Fest. I remember that too. That was hard. I was so mad when they didn't there. get together and do what they were supposed to do. And then I'm like, y'all didn't let the locks come over here. Like, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Bum. My nigga was there. I was happy yeah, about that. I was Tickets like, wait a minute there. now. Is this the hot boy reunion or the locks reunion? Because I, I came here for the hot boys, but I fuck with the locks too. But I just feel like, uh uh-uh, uh, this New Orleans, we ain't about to have that. Y'all that came over here for essence with 
Jermaine Dupree and all that. Yeah. No, that's New Orleans. Y'all got to go take that shit to Atlanta. I just think it would be a crazy impact if they, okay, y'all not going to let us perform. We going to show y'all what we bring, bring down here. I, I think y'all it would be it interesting. Down. I think, you know what I think we can all learn from this and what I think is going to be the most important part of it all is now there's money to be made after this. Yeah. Like, it's, 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 it's time for New Orleans to come together because we're getting left out because we're not unified. That's some real talk. Like, we're not, we're, people don't take us seriously no more. No. And we have to make sure we come together, we unify, so we can put ourselves back up there. I mean, honestly, why not? I mean, everybody in Atlanta, they did or they going to jail. So, you know, we could come back now. Let me ask you about this song, man, y'all got out. You and BG just did a hell of a movement when it come down to, Thank you, you know, y'all went crazy. Like, is the is the video out yet? It just came out Friday. Cause I was, well, I was just saying, man, cause I, I was looking for the video. You and BG, y'all standing in front of some house. Whose house is that? So. <laughs> What's that damn house? This is a funny story. Um, So, BG was in jail with the people's son. They had a family reunion. So BG brings the whole video set to the people family reunion. Shout out to the Richardson family. <laughs> they fool was so fire and they show love. Like we brings a whole video shoot to wow. the people family reunion. And they fed all y'all. They fed everybody. And so y'all kicked it at the house and everything. We that was our people, the Richardsons. Wow. So let me ask you this. When you when you when y'all did this song together, and shout out to BG. Shout you, out to let BG. me just say this. You didn't check in when you came to Dallas. Boss Talk 101 is here. I got peaches in the building, so you already gonna be spotlighted on the show. So it don't matter if you pull up or not. Um, but I'm gonna be real with you. I told you to send that nigga that picture of me and him on I, that yep, wall. Yep. Make sure you send that to him, and then I'm gonna give you the other picture where me, him, and Birdman was together when I came all the way to New Orleans on my, own, on, my, on my own dollar <laughs> I put my money at that Cadillac we drove down there and uh, basically me and him standing in uh, what, what what's uh, uh, Birdman's mama name uh, Miss Gladys. Gladys we standing in the me him put that and, on Miss Gladys yeah we standing in the place together where I presented Birdman with a picture a big old portrait oh wow it was dope and he was like man yeah, man I sure wish you would get me one of those bro you think I can get one of those not if you don't come by Boso, Boso. you gotta you come by not gonna get one of those you know you what I'm saying you gotta come to Boso <laughs> but at any rate just him um he dope. Like I say, I, I always rock with BG ever since day one. Um, just a dope dude. Real one. Real solid dude. Shout out. I had Henry to hit him up. I had Menace to hit him up. And I had, who else, baby? Oh, Rude Jew to hit him up. All since he been here in Dallas. So I know the nigga Noah a Boss Talk is here. Y'all got to give him that. I'm giving that <laughs> hell of a shout out. That there hurt. Boy, listen, that was spanky right there. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, you See, know. You went through all of them. You didn't go to the real one. Oh, yeah. That's all if right. If you'd have came to me, you I'd have said You know what? You'd have made it happen. See what I'm saying? And I he he always won't go to the mother nigga. Out. <laughs> shout out to little soldier Slim for trying to uh, uh, put these boulders up, talking about he can make it happen. I should have came straight to you. When y'all need yeah. to spot who you can't. <laughs> when y'all came to New Orleans, you need. I had to come with you. That's right. That's, that's, Maybe you won't go to the mother <laughs> niggas. <laughs> no, I just I enjoyed seeing y'all on the track together. What inspired that, and how did you and BG hook up to do that track? Um, so, so I'm gonna go all the way back to the recording of it and everything. Don't try to leave. I ain't out gonna nothing. leave nothing out because this is such an interesting story. So we hadn't, we only had talked to him when he first came out, like on Facetime. Okay. We only had talked to him, but he all was keep on saying, "Send me a track, send me a track, send me a track." So we finally got to see him when he came to the concert that ministered through in New Orleans. That was the first Welcome Home BG concert mm -hmm. in New Orleans. We finally got to see him. Uh, yeah. So he like, when you gonna send me a song? When you gonna send me a song? We gonna send me? I'm like. At this time, I'm going through it. I don't really want to do music no more. I'm not having fun with the shit no more. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I'm at my studio, and I get this beat from Petrowski. Shout out to Petrowski. Shout out. Shout out to Petrowski. So I get this beat. I'm like, man, I'm listening. I'm like, I, I like this beat. And I'm like, you know, we come in like an almond nigga. And I think about him because, you know, that's his shit. And I'm like, man, this shit sounds so good. Let me send it to Jizzle. So I hop on it. It's like. Got to be like 1 o'clock in the morning. I got to go to work at like 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm on the road. Actually, I'm in my car and I'm smoking. And I'm on the way to work and I make the first verse of it. And once I made the first verse of it and I sent it to him, he just, and when he sent it back, it just was like, what the fuck? Wow, he went off on it. it I, I would say this is one of his best verses since he's home. 
Wow, and you it's your song. It's my song. Isn't that crazy? That's hard, <laughs> nigga. That's hard. That's hard, man. Like, it's, my song. It's, like, it's so crazy because it's what everybody's you like. You deserve just, it, though, baby. I'm excited. You deserve I'm, I'm, it. I feel like I've put so much energy into just trying to bring my brother back to the main light and just put his name in the streets like I worked hard like just going to the street connecting with people like Monica so they could put him on them strings at them concerts connecting with them people and just trying to stay with the fans and give them what they want they wanted uh, the streets made me back on, on streaming I put it back on now they wanted you know they wanted the albums back online I went and got it and put it back on did this, did this revive your love for the music it did it did it did because for me I was always really standoffish I, I'd become really like Standoffish at that point because I just felt like you couldn't trust anybody. Mm -hmm. um, but when it came to doing things for my brother, it makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. because I'm meeting people and I'm networking. And I think for me, that's the best part of it. Like, okay. I love music all around, like the back doors of it, the insides of it, the outsides of it. I just love it. And I loved when we were in New Orleans and they brought up that big, huge picture mm -hmm. at Essence Festival of him. It, 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 it was, was, it so was just beautiful. It was just How did amazing. that make you feel when you saw that? I was excited. I get excited because, like I said, it's been a lot of work. I just never wanted people to forget about my brother because I felt like I like to call him a martyr of rap because right. I felt like he died for what he believed when it came to music and what he wanted to put in music. I don't know no other career that my brother has had outside of rap. He ain't mm -hmm. never had no job, no none of that. He just, music has always been in his, life. his love. So when I feel like if you see that, you see that in your family. You don't let people misuse your family. Right. You don't let people abuse their gifts, their talents. You don't let people take from y'all for their family. And that's your people dreams. You don't do that. I love the way how it still makes you feel so teary-eyed, too. Yeah, because I love my you... brother. That's my brother. Like, if you can't, people be like, because she just do too much. No, that's my brother. You yo, you should hope your sister, your brother love you that way. Because I feel like if I wasn't here, he'd be the same way. And like, keep I just found a song that he wrote for me. Really? Yeah. What you gonna do with it? I don't know. Everybody like you gonna put it out, and yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I might want to keep it just for me, but I'll probably put it out. And everything that I'm doing, would you knew put it that out, I would do or it. would you put it out and put like a an, um a feature on there to make it go even further? Now come on, now girl, you get in my business now. <laughs> <laughs> my business. <laughs> I wanna hear. You see what I mean? Though? So yeah, we just recently came up on a lot of old things uh, that we came across for my brother. So a lot of old tapes, Ooh. a lot of old music. That's good. Um, Is that the I house? Know it's been there. My mom... Uh, you like, never heard it before. This is the first time This is the first time. There's an I'll pay for it. I'm not I'll pay for it. There's a Make It Bounce remix. That's what it's called? He got, he got a Make It Bounce remix? I never knew that. There, there's a Make It Bounce remix. It has... Who is on there? Fifth Wall Weeby and somebody else. Yeah, that's a Make It Bounce remix. I never knew that in my life, but well, I got and it. And it never came out? I don't think so. I think he might have died before it came out. Wow. And what's the one for you called? It's called Life. Life. Mm -hmm. It's called Life. Do you think that all those is gone? Would you ever do like a music video, find uh, the look alike, and then put him in there and do? Or you can do a hologram. Yeah, or something. A hologram I, yeah, or like something a hologram. Like. I'm excited to see yeah. a hologram. I might, I might pass out if I seen a hologram do. I would do because it depends on if you're doing it from like when he was a younger person and then come up to like because the hologram. I don't, I don't feel like nobody looked like my brother. Really? I don't feel like nobody look like my brother. Well, they be like, because everybody tell me I look like Soldier Slim. I'm like, I have some like my brother. Well, your, 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 uh, your, your nephew came over and said he had a cousin that looked like your brother. Right, he did he say my, that. You know what? My little cousin is about the closest you're going to get. That's what he said. Well, that's my big cousin. Yeah, my big cousin is the closest you're going to get. Like, that's like the closest you're going to get. I want to ask you to go back to the BG song. I want you to give me a little bit of the hook and the verse, the way you bring that thing in there. So it goes, you know, I come in like an omen nigga, a navy nigga. If you ever try to play me, know that it ain't gravy. Then I come in. We don't do no pocket watching. We gets dough and we spin it. This that ball of blocking. We sip slow on that henny. This that calling shy shit. That any bitch, they could get it because I'm at they top shit. They talk it though, I be bout it probably. Realer than most skills, better than most. So where they at? At they throat, probably making them choke. Don't want the smoke. Put me in a blunt. Watch how I blow to settle the scope. Who they putting up like her is a go? I be really rapping like that. Cause I'm acting like that Could really make it happen like that Cause my people like that That's when you be reaching like that Show you reach for the cash I don't wanna have to let my people know where you at I be walking on these beats Like I be owning these bitches I ain't condoning they switch And get along with these snitches Make sure that when I'm burning these bridges I do it with vengeance This is cutthroat business You know we ain't leaving no witness Man wow, I love hard. it man That's hard man Yeah they were talking about that 
Nah, BG got to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing, when you posted that picture and stuff like that, I know that you had to go back and um, defend your know, family because people made it seem like y'all in a relationship Girl. or y'all doing all of that stuff. And I'm like, they know it's family. Like, why would they even suggest something like that? Girl, the folks of the internet. <laughs> He was like, somebody sent me a video where you say we was going to be together when I came home. I said, tell the people stop being messy. Oh, wow. Did you do that, Peaches? I did do it. <laughs> <laughs> I did do I it, but it. that was neither here nor there. <laughs> so they had yeah, no so they you know. yeah, so when they, so they had every right to say that then. I don't know about every right, but they did that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm like, people, you know, I'm a downplay today. I was like, I don't know what they talking about. People got to stop being messy. Like, <laughs> take to my green. That's good stuff, man. I love it, man. So uh, so you 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 definitely got to definitely let us know, you know, when uh, you yeah, bring that family. new music out. Because like I said, I be wanting to put that music out, but I'm going to do something with Boss Talk. My first Boss Talk, uh, like, it's going to be like a mixtape uh, or something. Or you, I'm going to put something together because I got to do that, which I've been telling you that ever since we met. Like, you did. I'm going to put this budget together and I got to run that. We got to run it. And then I'm going to try to do another show like I did mm -hmm. a while back and bring you back to Dallas to perform with a lot yeah, of you got to get me here. This is my first time in Dallas. I'm man, enjoying it. You in, you in this thing, man. I'm you enjoying you, it, y'all. I'm having you the best time. Was being able to take you out, man. I know. Was, you ain't going to go I'm, go I'm coming back. You ain't going to root his chicken. No, I ain't going to. Y'all got to. I'm coming back. <laughs> we got to get on back, right? Yeah, we got to get on back, I'm man. I'm coming back. I'm coming back fast, too, because I love it here. You love it here? I love it. Don't well, wait on the game to come back again. No, I'm coming without the game, because then I ain't got no time. I ain't going to be have to brush and do things. That's I'm on right. a high schedule that's with right. the game. With but the game, but that's all I'm good. coming back and experience. What do you think when you look at just all of the hip-hop with the females, like, doing what they're doing? They're dissing each other a lot of times on these tracks. And, they, you know, it's been going on for a long mm -hmm. time, whether it be Nikki dissing Megan or... Whatever, Cardi be doing something. How do you look at the females that they be roughing each other up? It's good for business. That's what it is, ain't it? It's That's good for business. <laughs> That's your pop. I mean, it's good for business. I mean, without that, would we be talking about these people? No, I'm not, no disrespect to nobody out there. Just want to say that. But without these th these things that arise, it's really not anything too exciting about That's it. Like, right. you love the female rap, of course, because it was one time we only had one female rapper for a very, very long time. That's real. So we love it when Cardi B came around. Like, it's everybody I love something about. I love Cardi B because I feel like Cardi B... Me too. ...opened that door, like... For me, I never thought I would be able to have kids and do rap. Mm. Because, you know, it was like, it was like nostalgia. Like, it was just frowned upon. So on. before her, you didn't have nobody else doing that? They wasn't. Look how long it took Nicki Minaj to have a kid. Like, look how long most female rappers, they didn't have a kid to like later on down the line. Like Eve, later mm. on down the line. Yeah. You, you, it was just like, it was like rubbish. Like, it was like frowned upon to have a baby. Or, yeah. Like, I was talking to uh, Lady Dahlia. She's from New Orleans. And she was like, I think it's so exciting that you have a baby. She was like, I never thought I could have a child because I like to do music and it would take from it would take that time away and, you know, men wouldn't find me as attractive. You know what I'm saying? Once you have a baby. And that's how I felt when I first mm. had my baby. Like, people are not going to find, I ain't going to be able to do music no more. Wow. But when she opened that door and it was just like, people was like, yeah, women do this. This is what women do. We have kids. We mm -hmm. we have kids and we work. So why wouldn't a rapper be able to do the same yeah. thing? You can get your body back, right? And keep pushing. Keep yeah, pushing. Or sometimes they lose that button. It be gone. It, 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 <laughs> the baby bought the, the baby bring the body. Or sometimes it Take it. Sometimes it go either it. way. I've seen a girl get a body, uh, have a body, lose the body, have another baby, get the body back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I, I can't tell what's going on with these bro. But let me ask you this, man. When you seen BG and Turk mm -hmm. getting into it, <laughs> what the hell did you think about that? Because you know, Wait, this is something funny, that like, I've been literally public. walking down the street in the uh, walking down the street, and somebody will ask me that question. I'll be like, "Why are you asking me?" No, that? no, this is public. <laughs> this is you gotta this, give me that. That's what you do, E. That's your job. That yeah, ain't their job. You from New Orleans? Yeah, yeah that ain't their job. This that's is right, your this job. You know what I'm saying? I'm just down in the street, <laughs> and they asking me. I'm walking in the quarters, and they asking me type of things like that. But uh. 
I don't really like. I don't know. I'm um, I'm cordial to both sides because you know Turk is my cousin. So I'm I ain't cordial. no Turk was your cousin. Turk my real cousin. <laughs> That's you the crazy part of it all. <laughs> first That's why cousin, people ask me first that. First cousin, third cousin, what? He's my first cousin. First cousin. Wow. So what Turk, the my hell? daddy, on your daddy's side. Cousin. Yeah. Oh wow. People don't, like him and my brother aren't cousins because my brother, of course, is maternal. Different. Right? Yeah. And then it's paternal. But yeah, Turk is my real cousin. And wow. so what did you think about it? So everybody like, how you do a song BG and Turk your cousin? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't, what you mean? But let me tell you, he was kind of acting a little different though. So I don't know. But I ain't going to even put that in the atmosphere. <laughs> he was when I seen him. I was like, why you doing that? Because you my cousin. <laughs> but we, I went to go see him at the that Hollywood. And I was like, he acting a little different, but it's fine though. We we at the we at the reunion. It is what it is. We gonna I mean, be there. It's, it's, it's the, the beef squash now, so everything good, right? Yes. You don't know? I don't know. I, I stay out of that, E Day. That's grown men business. <laughs> So, I say out of that. I just want a feature from both. What's up? There you go. That's your cousin. He better do it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's it. I, I, shout out to B, uh, BG, but uh, shout out to Turk. Turk, Turk follow uh, Boss Talk, exactly. and he follow uh, me as well. He show us love when it come down yeah, to it. Turk, shout out my be cousin high. Turk. Yeah, that's right. He be my high. Cousin, let me like, tell you, I, that's my cousin. When he went on Drink Champs, my cousin made sure to throw me in that interview. Yeah, like yeah. a big dog supposed to. Yeah, so, so I that's can't. Hard. Yeah, that's, that's hard. my people. Like I, I love that. Why I be telling people when they, I'm like, I, it makes no sense to me. But I'm pretty sure they have their own personal reasons on why they feel the way that they feel about each other. But I just feel like when it comes to money, I love you. Do you do you you do you? So you you refuse to pick a side, and I can respect yeah, that. I'm not picking no side. That's my family. That's, that's right. my family, and that's my family. Like, so, why you gotta pick a side? Yeah, yeah like no, I don't have nothing to do with that. Side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. have nothing to do with that. I'm I'm cordial to all people. To all people. Um, when you when you think about your brother and all the stuff that he done for all these artists that be using his music and, and really living off their legacy of his music. What do you think about that? Just basically, he did a lot of music with a lot of people, changed a lot of people's lives. At first I felt a way about it, but now E, I feel like God gonna always make your enemy your first dude. So the Come things that now. people do for evil, it's gonna always turn around. He's gonna turn it to good. Like, it's gonna always turn around. Look at, look at my brother's birthday, Master P, posting him. Yeah, like yeah. God gonna always make your enemy your footstool. They gonna do like they if people who probably never talked to you before you was dead. They gonna you know what I'm saying? When they see the world enjoying you, they gotta enjoy you too. They gotta celebrate you just like everybody else. And do anybody respectfully that that's using and playing and making benefits off streams off your brother money? Does does any of that come back to you guys at all? Oh, I cut they water short. E ain't no. Ain't no, <laughs> they're making money. Why? Ain't nobody doing that. What you mean? Really? I went collected. Oh, yeah. You got this on there? I pulled them all down. You pulled them all down? They had way more soldiers than them. Everybody like, you took one by one. You know, that ain't you. Give me so that you back. took all of the, all of them that it was way their music was upstream and they were making yeah, money. Like they iTunes, wasn't respecting so a lot Apple of people music was doing for that. years. And they didn't know and you came from out of nowhere and was like, we taking that. that down. Give me that. Was there any they could have made it right by trying to pay it you. They wasn't or? trying to. Like, when we went to go, like, when we went to go and, like, because we was going to leave them up and just, that's our money. Yeah. But they they were trying to collect 100% off something that wasn't theirs. So the producers, I was unaware. I'm thinking when the songs are out in the beginning, I'm thinking it's maybe it's the producers. That is their beat. So I can't be mad about a nigga. You know, that's their beat. They won't make their money back. Um, But at the same time, the producers hit me up like, are y'all putting this out? So the streets made me came up out of nowhere because streets made me had been pulled down off wow. lines for a long time so out of nowhere a version of street made made me come up no display picture no nothing um i called my people on the phone like what this about he's like we're about to get it took down when they find out it's somebody from dubai whoa mm -hmm. like my brother music at first when they were streaming on youtube mm -hmm. it was a nigga that lived in a hut in india wow making hella money off my brother's shit I would snatch it all down. So when and you then, snatch it down, can you go back and get the money that was owed we to you? We have to sue the people because Apple, okay. of course, we have to go through them and get their information because we're going to do uh, all of them. The people in the Indiana hut, we're going to do the Dubai people. We have to do the people that had uh, Thug Brothers as well. Like all those things, all that we have to because it was blocking it. Like I couldn't even put my brother mu uh, music back on streaming because no. they had broken it, it down like and it made theirs. like mixtape and saying it was theirs. So we had to, yeah, it's, they had to pull when I put years later so the original years later is no label at all that was primarily just my brother's album that was his own money that they put behind it years later years later a few months after is Koch 2 and him 
But the original years later, the first one that came out that had the original tracks, it was nobody else. That was his full album. Mm. Somebody was collecting everything. When we put it on there, wow. they pulled it down because they sent the fucking thing to say that they own it. Mm. I told my people go ahead and tell them they can wrap that one up. Cause you that, can fight that. Yeah, that ain't that ain't you, partner. You made them come on off that. So yeah. they had to take theirs down. They we had to take theirs down to get ours back up. But how long did it take you to fight all that? this? All this has been going on for years. But once I came into the fact and started doing shit like this, been going on probably pulling down probably about a year now. Okay. The pulling down and putting back up. So um, now we're doing because now they found a way to go around and they try they collecting off Magnolia Slim. Wow. So I'm coming get that too. Wow, and and, and, mm. and and your brother would be so proud of you. Oh, you always. Know, That's why I say in the song he talks about all that. He yeah. talks about he was like, You I know you gonna handle my business and you got to know that. Did you cry? Wow. I haven't I try not to like things that yo, know, I don't like to I've heard bits and pieces of it. So like I'm just really So you haven't it. heard the whole no, thing. Yet. I'm too emotional. I know you are. I'm too I, emotional. I agree with that. Like I, I can't do it. Like even videos, like I don't But I'd wanna hear it to hear all the things he said about me. I wanna hear it, but I just wanna take it in there my own time. Okay. Got like it. I just want to take it in at my own time, like because it's just that special. It's just that moment with me and my brother. Yeah. What, what do you say when you hear him compare your brother to Tupac? I love it because I feel like he's that good. Wow. I feel like he's that good. I feel like my brother is like a prophet. Like who would have known that twenty years later you've been dead, even before your time of being dead, you knew this world. You knew the justice system. You dealt with the justice system and the injustice in the justice system where you can make songs like Soldier Life Mentality. And when people like George Floyd died, it'd be just that big that they're using this record. Like, that's big. Mm -hmm. Like, Trayvon Martin, we've seen a lot of it with Trayvon Martin. And that's when I knew, like, his power and how big he was in this world. Wow. The <clears throat> the thing because injustice will forever keep going. It will. That's the thing. Yeah, but you just have to have somebody like him on the inside to tell you how it feels to be on the other side. Right. You know what I'm saying? We know about it, but how does it feel to be a part of it? Like, even with that Tyreek Hill yeah. you know, situation, yeah. like, I listen to a man on the radio, it's like, well, what he was supposed to do, why, I get what he was supposed to do, but why is it that much that we have to change our lives, change how we react because the police are the way that they are. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, well, he should have kept his, like, why he have to, you know what I'm saying? He got to adjust who he is because the police are being conniving and corrupt. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. why black men got to worry about going home? Like, that shouldn't be a, a subject that we talk about. Like, it's right. It's not right. The police shouldn't do that. Wow. When you look at, and I go back all the way because this is a crazy place to go, but it's really just something I have a question about. Like when your brother had passed away in front of that house and you went back there that day, I remember when you talked about it yeah, last time yeah. on here, but how long did it take y'all to get, you know, comfortable enough to, you know, I know you, what, you guys didn't move or leave or nothing, right? No, so we stayed at my aunt's house for a while. Okay, that's what I wanted yeah, to Yeah, we know. stayed at my aunt's house for like maybe two two weeks until okay, we went okay. back um, to our house. How hard was it? For me, it wasn't as bad. I just, my mom, I just wanted to take care of her. Okay. I just wanted to take care of her. Because you know, after the funeral, everybody go home. So you just left with those people. And you got to comfort those people. And you got to make sure that they feel loved and that they feel good about themselves. He had a closed casket funeral. No. He had an open casket funeral. Camouflage leather suit that you see on that picture. Really? Mm. Laid out. Wow. <laughs> and and so when y'all went back home, you basically, you was okay, but mom had difficulties just trying to get well, used I've to Well, I've never that. been able to, you know, that's why it's harder for me because I've never been able to process, I feel like, my grief. I feel like I've always had to be strong because I can't, you know what I'm saying? My mama, mama. I got to be good for my mama. Yeah, she so, told me why. nobody ago. was strong for you. I just got, it. just me. Like, when my brother gone, it's me next. Like, so... Once my brother was gone, that was the man. You know, he made sure he was good. Once he gone, it's my time. Now nah, I got to make sure. Everybody good. Everybody good. Like, still to this day. Like, I'm going to make sure everybody good. Like, my That's nephew, I'm make sure thing. he good. My mama, we just bought her a brand new car. I'm Come on, sure man. Make sure she good. Like, That's we good. Why. Well, she told me a while ago when I picked you up, she said, uh, make sure you bring make my sure baby, baby. Get my yeah, baby back. Make sure. make sure you get so my I baby back. Sure. When we went, I said, she, uh, I was like, what? she wouldn't, like, she had a wreck. She had an old car. She would had a wreck. And I'm like, if my brother was here, this wouldn't even be a question. He will bring you two, and you're going to get what you want. So we went, and she wow. got what she wants, showroom flow, what she want. Like, that's what it's about. It's about years later being able to do for your mom. Like, my brother been gone for 20 years, and my yeah. mom just got a brand new car wow. without him being here. That's hard. I like, love it. I love it. 
I would have walked in now. We're going to get what you want. You're going to get what you want. That's beautiful, man. So I, I got to shout out a uh, little soldier Slim. He was on that video with you. He did a cameo on the video at the My video. Show. So he was over there that day as well. Like, it's crazy because you're leaving a legacy and a history of who you guys are. And people are going to watch because of who you guys represent. Right, yeah. You know, like, uh, how, how excited are you about just the new music and the stuff that you're about to accomplish in, you know, the coming year, like 2025? Now that you got the old, uh, the old music where your brother had, you feel to re dabble and dibble with that. How excited and are you? And you got a music itch back. Right. <laughs> you got a music yeah, how back. excited are you? I was I would be real. I'm really, really, really scared. But I'm ready. I feel like it's been a long time coming. I feel like all we ever wanted was just to bring back um with our music to his whole campaign. Um it just was, you know, all the time, like we say, all you got to do is wait on God's time. So if you out there and you questioning life, Come you on. don't know where you're going, you, you feel like for God, he ain't forget, he ain't it's his forget. time. His time is the greatest time because if you want it now, it might not be as special as it would be now. Like, I feel like if we got it like 10 years ago, it wouldn't be as great as now when BG's home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like being able to do it with BG is just amazing because it feels right it feels right and bg is the only one out of the whole hot boy click uh out of everybody uh that that have done anything with you guys right as far as the music my uh, nephew's done of course with juvie Ju okay you uh, he's done some stuff with he's juvie. done some stuff with but juvie. you haven't done nothing no I have haven't you done, done it you haven't done nothing with nobody but bg but bg is the okay. first hot boy that i've done something with that's hard that's hard bg's the first hot boy that um i've done something with bg's the first person to co-sign me Really? Like, niggas wasn't fucking with me? Niggas and you've been nothing. doing this a while, so... Let's talk you about it, thing. and I'm good, bitch. Right, so Excuse you... Me. Everybody... And I'm good. I seen you when KL was putting you, you know, doing stuff with you. Anyways. <laughs> I did uh, see you. <laughs> yeah, so, anyways. <laughs> this woman something else, man. Yeah, I've been doing it for a while, but they just wouldn't. Like, that cosign was really what I needed to put me on that, that magnitude of that level to yeah. really get out to the masses of people. Because once they see my face, the story sells itself. I don't have to do much. But it was like putting that... In front of their face, where they knew, they knew um, that I did music and I, that I was good at doing it. So BG was the first person that really put to put really co-sign it to really put me on to like that video. I didn't do anything. I showed up with clothes and hair, and he went. He, and, and everything when I got to when I got to Houston, everything was already set up. Wow, that's love. Like all my career, I've always had to do everything, everything. and to show up and everything just be done was like I can't do number. I and my book, he the realest, the realest nigga ever right now. Ever, man. And as you should, man. He is. Like I said, he for him, to, like, he did that. So yeah. unselfish. Um, Like, this nigga I was fucking with goes to tell him, well, you do a lot of things you ain't got to do. Why would it come to me do a lot of things you ain't got to do? We did the song with the other nigga that can't rap. You didn't say nothing. Oh, shit. <laughs> so is that some hate? Let's talk about it. But yeah, he done hit it on me. That's hate, right? So somebody came, and I don't, you don't have to say no name. Somebody came to BG and said, uh, you ain't got to do this for her. You ain't got to do all that. You don't got to do, you you, you, you don't got to do all that. You do much. a lot of things you don't have to do. And so, so you just basically know what to do. You said earlier that God will make your enemies your footstool. So you basically continue to work. You are very gifted, young lady. Exactly. You been getting to it. Yeah. I like your drop the mic uh, videos, what you was doing. Been getting like, to it. I, that's what made me say, like, when I do my stuff, what I tell you. Yeah. When I do, I'm going to get her, her, and her, and you to her. One of the first hers that I say. Like, I'm going to do mine different. I see people doing different things, but when I do it, it got to be it got to be on the next level. And you one of the people that helped me get there. I, I'm just appreciative. I'm no, appreciative you for people like hell. Boss Talk that when even when I wasn't a big deal, they made me a big deal. You was a big deal to us. Right. <laughs> and made, so I wasn't, you know, but they came and got me. And that's they made, right. They, we did it and we, we it was just so flawless. And it's like, that's how it was. So when he gave me that cosign and the song sounds so good, I'm like, this is my song. That's hard. That's my song. I own 100% of it. Like, that's my song. So whatever I want to do with it, I can. Well, run it so, up. You know what I'm saying? And you never know. They got we could do a remix and we might put Turk on them. Hey, <laughs> you silly boy, you crazy. So <laughs> what else you got for my girl, man? Like I don't want to miss nothing because I got her here. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta you gotta give me your top three one more time. Top three artists of all time, because dead or you know alive. That changes. Yeah. Let's see. Top three dead or alive. Okay, number three. This this rap. It don't Anything. matter. All genres. All genres. Okay, that you gotta 
So number three, I'm gonna put Beyonce at number three because okay. I like B. You like I like B? Beyonce. Okay. I think she could really, you know, she could she could work with the best of them. Number two, number two. Anita Baker. Mm. Ooh, wow, you done got all the way away from the rap. Wait, Wait I got my number one gonna be rap, but my AT Anita Baker, I oh, feel like she would go. know who your number one is. Let's talk about it. My <laughs> brother. <laughs> Ain't nobody messing with my brother. I be telling my daughter, she be like, my, I be like, your uncle, top baddest rapper alive. So now she be like, my uncle, my uncle. Like, if we go, uh, they have a lot of murals, of course, of my brother. Yeah. She seen one when we went uptown, and she was like, my, that's my uncle. I was like, you, you yeah. gotta love it. What's that's the best hard. mural you've seen? My I favorite know. one is the one that's uptown on Louisiana Avenue in New Orleans. It's on a um, bar called Big Man's. That's my favorite because it looks just like him. So that's the one you see me take a lot of pictures yeah, yeah, with. Right. The one with the big feet. Yeah. Right. Um, I love that one. The other one, they have another one. Like He has like got to be like four in New Orleans total. Um, there's one downtown. That one is good, but I feel like they've let other people draw on top of it and I'm just not big with people recreating people art. If you yeah. started okay. it, I don't like people okay. redoing it and retouching it. Then they made his lips like extra, extra big. We got big lips, but not that big. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they got like two other ones and they just, you know, I, I just, like somebody said, I'm not appreciative. So you know what? They ugly, but thank you. <laughs> wow, man. Just thank, thanking God for you, man. And I want you to continue to work like you've been working. Don't of give course. up on the music. We need the music. Don't of get course. frustrated in the fact of whatever whatever anybody thinks. I don't care what nobody thinks. I just want to see the music keep happening. I know it's tough because the monetary thing, streaming is not paying like the old music used to right. pay. And it's tough to try to keep a budget and do things. You know what I'm saying? Like off your own budget. Right. It's tough. Like, it is very tough. But you know what? God gave it to me so I could use it. That's it. That's it. It was one time I came in and I had it. I had to go to work to get it. And I yeah. saved up enough where I could do it. I could pay for my own stuff. So I'm not complaining. As long as he keep putting it in me to do it, I'm going to keep doing it. Wow. So who got the, what did we ask about Baton Rouge in New Orleans last night? Who got the best food? Mm-hmm. Look how she looking at you. <laughs> Somebody came on here and was really trying to push that narrative. Somebody that, came on here and talked about Baton Rouge. Rouge. Like Baton Rouge. B.R. Had that, had that dish over there. Had that twang. Yeah. What, what dish they got? <laughs> Just Nobody never said bring me no Baton Rouge for food. <laughs> what do Baton Rouge got better than y'all? Me, uh, well, it's quiet crickets. <laughs> she ain't saying she, nothing. She's thinking about it. She's trying to think. They got the state building over there. <laughs> the state building over there. <laughs> they got the. I open on head because I like Baton Rouge. I really, I go to the clubs. I love that. That's what I'll say. The club. Baton Rouge club scene is better than ours. The club mm -hmm. scene is better. The dope. club scene. Like, if you ever, like, we would travel, you know, Baton Rouge is not that far, like, probably 45, 50 minutes. Right. But we would go to their club and we'll go out at 10 o'clock, make it there like 11, be there till like 4 o'clock in the morning and leave. Their club scene is so dope. It's dope. You don't wow. even want to leave. Everybody in the club dances. Man, woman, everybody dances. So New Orleans is not like that? Girl, please. All they want to do is stand on the wall and talk about the clothes they wore. Like, the section life is just terrible. Like, who was the first person that came up with a section? Yeah. We need to talk to them. <laughs> like, the, I hate it. You know, like Clubs have been terrible since the section life came about. Mm. It messed everything up. Everything. I remember we used to be on the dance floor. Oh, my God. I used to have drink and, and you, But you're going to dance. That's what you're going to do. You're going to cut up. Oh, my God. Every time you try to dance, you keep hitting your knees on these damn sections. <laughs> 90s was the best year, year for music. Do you see me. what I'm saying? 90s, 2000. Oh, my God. That's going to be different for different people. I love early 2000s, 90s music. I love mm, it. Really? Yeah, that's the best I love music. the dance floor. And they keep on putting these damn sections. I don't want to stand up here and watch you pop bottles. That's no. three times the price. Yeah, they and they were they went like on them how, on them breakfast. Who's the first nigga that sold a bottle at three hundred and fifty dollars? Like, ain't no way this bottle like twenty three dollars. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's just. But how it's I, a social media era where everybody want to get the pictures and the videos and stuff like that. So that's why they do all those sections girl, so that it make it look good. I ask. can't believe it. I said three hundred and fifty dollars for a bottle. It was my birthday. I ain't even want to have it. They try. They made me pay for a section and a bottle. The section and the bottle should come together. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I'm just going to hit you over the head of the fact that uh, I don't know if BG seen a picture with you and Kevin Gates. Uh, uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> hey, bitch. <laughs> he stopped being nasty. Let me kill him. I look how I throw that in there before we get off here. <laughs> All my niggas from Louisiana. But <laughs> Baton Rouge versus New Orleans. All my niggas <laughs> from Louisiana. Shout out to Kevin Gates, though. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> when you gonna do something with him? That's, That's what, what I'm saying. That gotta be the next one, huh? Yeah, that'll be hard. That gotta be the next so one. So right, right now, we hey Kevin Gates, get with hey get with Project Barbie. Peaches, a.k.a. You know and, me. and make sure Look, y'all get a track. Uh-huh. You know. He they need to get me. that track done right. And he go, he going to tell you. They got a video of us online where we hugged up. He, go, he always talk about it. <laughs> Check it, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. How do oh, people yes. get older you if they're trying to look out? Well, I am the Project Barbie. So on Instagram, that's D-A-P-R-O-J-E-C-T. B-A-R-B-I-E. Um, G.I. Peach is on everything else. You could put the Project Barbie too. Soldier Slim Sister. That's me too. Um, anywhere you want to look, you can find me. I'm going to be everywhere though. You ain't got to look for me. I'm coming to your screen. Do wow. you have a celebrity crush? Give it up! <laughs> I think we talked about it earlier, right? Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't know if it changed. It's going down, it's going down changed. man. Okay, we're going to leave it at <laughs> Check it, man. Yeah. Hey, man, it's been another great segment. Uh, thank you so much. We love you, baby. All the time. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. Man.